What's up everyone, this is FP Sticks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top Pokemon for the Catacomb Cup. So the Catacomb Cup is um, this month's Sylph Arena Cup format. If you don't know what the Sylph Arena is, they are an organization that puts on these really fun tournaments and unique metas every single month. Head on over to sylph.gg for more information about, about that and where you can find a tournament um, to participate in. Super fun. So this month's format is the Catacomb Cup, and if you go to sylph.gg, you can pull up the rules and restrictions for this cup. So let's check out this graphic. Um, it looks like the typings that are allowed are dark types, grass types, ice types, rock types, and bug types. And um, some of the bands here, some of the restrictions, no steel types, um, no legendaries, mythicals, no shadows, no regionals. And then specific Pokemon bands, no Scrafty, no Dugong, no Alolan Ninetales, no Obstagoon or Crustle. Now, just, just look at the typings, all right? Dark, Grass, Ice, Rock, Bug. Nothing really hard threatens Dark types in this cup. And so as you will see once we go over to PV Poke and check out some of the top Pokemon here, Umbreon is going to be running rampant. The thing, um, yes, Bug does hit Umbreon for uh, super effective damage. Bug does hit Dark for super effective damage. But Bug does not resist Dark type attacks. So um, as you will notice in a lot of these matchups, um, Umbreon's kind of just going to outbulk a lot of its counters. But let's head on over to PV Poke and check out some of these top rated Pokemon for this cup here. All right, here we are at PV Poke on the rankings tab. If you don't know about PVPoke.com, it's the best online PVP resource for uh, Pokemon Go PVP. Make sure you check it out. We're in the rankings tab. We have sorted by the Catacomb Cup here. Um, and this is very interesting. The list has already changed since I last looked at it. Um, I anticipated Umbreon being on the top here. Umbreon's actually down here at number six. Sudowoodo has claimed the number one spot. What in the world? Sudowoodo. So it has a lot of swag here because it can beat Umbreon and Lapras, Vespaquen, Beedrill, Zwilus. These are going to be some of the, the top meta picks in Catacomb Cup. You're obviously going to lose the Venusaur, Alolan Graveler, Frostlass. It's pretty interesting that you lose the Frostlass, uh, most likely because the counter is resisted because of the, the ghost typing there. Let's check out this specific matchup, though. Okay, wow. Yeah, you lose the Frostlass in the 1 and 2 shield, and that's just because Avalanche is such a strong move, and it hits for um, neutral damage because Rock does not resist Ice-type attacks there. So, Sudowoodo is at number 1. You have access to Counter as the fast move. Fighting-type fast move, you're going to be hitting super effective on the Rock-types and the Ice-types, which is really great there. Um, as well as hitting super effective on the dark type. So anything that has a fighting fast move is really going to have a lot of play in this cup. And then rock slide, really great move. You get stab on it and earthquake as a, a nice nuke there to threaten um, opposing uh, pseudo widows, which is great. At number two, we have Venusaur. We know Frenzy Plant is such a crazy busted OP move. Um, so Venusaur is going to keep Pseudowoodo in check, which looks like you're absolutely going to need to do, and you beat Umbreon. This is super great. Um, those are two really big wins right there. Um, you're going to lose to Zwilus and, and lose to Lapras, but this Lapras matchup... The Frenzy Plant is still going to do a lot of damage, so you see you do lose in the 1 and 2 shield. Um, and I believe in the two shield Lapras can actually just go straight surf, but it might be IV dependent there. But Venusaur, another really top pick in this Catacomb Cup. Caracosta, okay, I don't even have one of these. Isn't this like that rock water turtle thing? <laughs> I don't even have one of these, but it's ranked at number three. What in the world? It's got Rock Throw as a fast move. Um, rock Throw does a good amount of damage. It's a pretty decently high damage fast move. So you're going to be hitting super effective on those ice types and the bug types. Really great. You're going to absolutely melt Vespaquen, uh, because of its bug and flying typing, going to destroy Beedrill. You actually beat Zwilus here? What? That's crazy. Rock Throw, Body Slam, and Surf. That's a really nice moveset. Let's check out this matchup against Zwilus. Really? Uh, you only beat it in the one shield. You only beat it in the one shield going straight Body Slam there. So that makes sense. 
But that's cool that you have play against uh, Zwilus. Very interesting there. So Caracosta, rank number three. That's pretty legit. Alolan Graveler running Volt Switch, Rock Blast, and Stone Edge. So the Volt Switch is going to hit super effective damage on Lapras, like any of these ice water types you're going to run into. Any of the bug flying types is going to hit for super effective on uh, Rock Blast and Stone Edge. So it looks like they're recommending the Double Rock Charge moveset. Um, pretty interesting there. I know if you run a Lowland Golem, which is down here at number 10, um, it recommends Rock Blast and Stone Edge, but then if you go down to the charge moves here, Wild Charge is actually one of the more things that's resisted. This might be an error in, in the PV Poke ranking right now, but honestly, I would probably run Wild Charge and Stone Edge, especially if I'm running Volt Switch as a fast move. I'm going to get very good energy generation there. Zwilus is at number five. Zwilus is a dragon and dark type Pokemon. Get to have access to Dragon Breath, which is just a crazy busted fast move. Really good. Body Slam, very solid move, even though Zwilus does not get stab on it. It's a very energy efficient move. And then Dark Pulse hits pretty hard. Um, one of the main features that Zwilus has is that you actually beat Umbreon here, but it looks like it's a very close battle. If we take a look at this. Um, looks like we win in all shielding scenarios, just going straight body slam, obviously, because Dark Pulse would be resisted. However, what if this Umbreon is a rank one? I'm curious to see if this is an IV dependent matchup. We still win in the one and two shield scenarios. And then I'm assuming if we have maximized stats as well, we still win in the one and two sh shielding scenarios. So that's pretty great. Zwilus is going to be one of those Pokemon that can keep Umbreon in check. Okay, here we go. Umbreon at number six. Even though Umbreon's at number six, man, I, Umbreon is so good. Umbreon is so good. There's nothing that actually hard counters Umbreon. Like, look at this. Look at the key losses, Sudowoodo. Um, that's still not a super high battle rating there, so it's a very close match. Uh, Venusaur is looking like it's one of its better counters, but Umbreon is so bulky, such a good generalist, and with really the only threats that it has to look out for of being uh, bug-type damage, I think Umbreon is going to be one of those must-haves on your team. Um, it's just a very solid Pokemon. Vespaquen is getting some play here. It looks like uh, Fury Cutter is the preferred fast move, so you're going to have really good energy generation there. And then X Scissor and Power Gem are the recommended charge moves there. You're going to be able to beat Umbreon because of your bug type damage that you're dishing out there. You beat it in all shielding scenarios. That is a very consistent win. That's super good. Uh, it's a relatively close win. Um, but it's nice to have Pokemon on your team that can consistently keep Umbreon in check. Pinsir is in here, man. Fury Cutter, X Scissor, and Close Combat. So the Close Combat nuke is going to be pretty nice for Sudowoodo and Lapras um, and Umbreon as well. But you're already going to be hitting Umbreon for super effective damage with those bug type moves anyways. It's cool that Pinsir is rated so highly here. Lapras, man, any cup that Lapras is allowed in, it's always one of the top contenders. It has an amazing move set. Ice Shard is the legacy fast move there. And then Surf and Skull Bash. So no Ice Beam here in the Great League. Typically the move set is Surf and Skull Bash. You're going to beat Venusaur as we looked into that matchup earlier in the 1 and 2 shield. That's really great. Uh, beating Beedrill, Vespaquen, that makes sense because of the flying typing. Drapion, I'm assuming this is Ice Fang Drapion. And you're going to be able to handle Frostlass, which is great. Because Lapras is going to be able to double resist the Avalanche um, from Frostlass. Av uh, Frostlass has to go straight Shadow Ball, for sure. And you're going to be hitting for neutral with the Surf. So that's really great. You are going to lose to Pseudo Wudo. But I would imagine this is a very close matchup because you're going to still hit for super effective damage with Surf. Yeah, you win it in the two shield. If you just double shield, you'll be able to handle Sudowoodo because of the Surf damage. What if it's a rank one Sudowoodo, though? If we maximize the stats, you still win in the two shield um, because the Surf, I would imagine, is the thing that KOs the charge move. Yep. So that's pretty great. Lapras can still handle Sudowoodo in the two shield, but the rock slide and the counter damage from Sudowoodo is definitely going to add up there. Alolan Golem, we already went over. Gloom at number 11. Wow. So we have a Razor Leaf user up here. I personally am not the biggest fan of Razor Leaf users or Charmers in general I, uh, because it's such high damage, very low energy, and that doesn't really fit my play style too much. So I tend to avoid Razor Leafers or Charmers. 
But it's cool that Gloom's way up here. It's going to destroy Sudowoodo. If you want a hard check to Sudowoodo, Gloom is going to be the response. It's going to be resisting the counters. Um, and the Rock Slides will be hitting for neutral damage there. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what charge move you're running because you're essentially just using Gloom for the fast move damage. You can just even run it with only Sludge Bomb. I think that's totally fine. Going to be able to beat Lapras again because it's just the Ice Shard damage that's going to add up. You don't have to worry about Ice Beam. And destroy the Alolan Golem and Graveler bros. Beat my cargo Sableye. You do lose to Umbreon, though. The Razor Leaf damage just can't keep up. I wonder if in the two shield if we win this. Gloom, nope. Gloom loses in the one and two shield. So that's very useful inf information there. Gloom at number 11. Pretty cool. Scolipede. I still don't have one of these things built, and I probably won't run it in this cup. Um, what the heck? It beats Sudowoodo? No way. No way. How does Scolipede beat Sudowoodo? Wow, I want it looks like it's bait dependent. So you have to bait the X scissor and then land the Megahorn. Let's see if you can win straight Megahorn. That's really gonna decide if this is a consistent win. No, definitely not. This is a bait dependent matchup. What if we go straight X scissor? Nope. Okay. Well, Scolipede can handle Sudowoodo, but that is a bait dependent matchup there for sure. You are gonna beat Umbreon though. I would imagine you could just go straight uh I wonder if you could go straight X Scissor here. Poison Jab X Scissor? How does this fare? Yeah, wins in the one and two shield. What if you go straight Megahorn? You will win uh, only in the one shield. So maybe straight X Scissor is a safer play here. If you do bait, I would imagine you win in all shielding scenarios. Uh, still just a one and two shield. If I were to play this, I would go straight X Scissor in that matchup there. Scolipede up there, pretty legit. Jumpluff is making its appearance again. Uh, we saw some Jumpluff use in the Forest Cup, running Bullet Seed, Aerial Ace, and Energy Ball. Going to beat Pseudo Widow. However, the Rock Slides are still going to be hitting for super effective damage. What? You can beat Umbreon? That's crazy. Only in the Zero and the One Shield. Okay, what if you have a Rank 1 Jumpluff and even against a Rank 1 Umbreon? I wonder if it's IV dependent. You win in the one and two shield. Wow, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Can you go straight energy ball though? It looks like you have to bait aerial ace there. Can you go straight energy ball? You only win in the one shield. Okay, still nice that it has some play against somebody on there though. That's great. Frostlass is an amazing Pokemon. We saw it used all over the place in... The Sorceress Cup is one of my favorite picks for sure. Powder Snow, Avalanche, and Shadow Ball. Avalanche and Shadow Ball hit so strong. You're going to beat Pseudo Wudo just because that Avalanche damage is not resisted there. You definitely are going to lose to Umbreon. Though the foul plays are going to hurt so much. Um, you're going to... Oh, this Venusaur matchup I think is... Okay, you do beat it in all even shielding scenarios. But it is very close. As you can see right at the end, Venusaur actually faints... Um, with energy. So if there's like any lag in the game, that's a little sketch. And you can actually see this is fairly IV dependent on who is going to win CMP, Frostlass versus Venusaur. So um, if Venusaur has like a higher attack stat and you have like a maximized Frostlass, oh, I bet you lose this matchup now. Yep, you lose against Venusaur in the one and two shield. That's pretty nuts. Ivysaur uh, is just the knockoff version of Venusaur if you don't have one with Frenzy Plant. Snowy Cast Form used to be like rank 2, but now it's down here at number 16. Um, ice types, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how much play ice types are going to have in this cup. It's nice that it's going to hit for super effective on the, um, the grass types there. But uh, there are rock types floating around, so we'll have to see. And ice in general is a pretty horrible defensive typing. Um, it, it hits for super effective on a decent number of typings, but defensively, it's weak to a lot of things. Here we have Beedrill with Drill Run. So um, we just had Weedle Community Day, and you probably have a lot of Beedrills with Drill Run stored up. You're gonna be able to beat Venusaur. You can beat Zwilus, that's pretty great. Probably just going straight X Scissor, because you will be hitting for super effective damage with the bug type damage there. Ice Fang, Drapion, you're going to beat that Alolan Muck and Shift Tree. 
Omastar, if you have a legacy Omastar with Rock Slide, still looks like it has some play. Glalie, I'm not the biggest fan of Glalie. I think uh, it's just the knockoff version of Frostlass, and because it doesn't have that ghost typing, uh, I don't like that you're going to be taking super effective damage from like the counters from Sudowoodo, for example. So here's another Razor Leafer, Victory Bell at number 21. And as we scroll down, we start running into some more fringe picks. Sableye's down here at number 28 can beat Lapras, you're definitely going to lose to Umbreon, but there's a little bit of play there against like Beedrill, Vespaquen. Um, so I hope this video kind of helps you get a feel for some of the top picks in this Catacomb Cup. Once I start doing more practice battles and getting a feel for the meta, you better believe that I'm going to be pumping out some more Catacomb videos here. But head on over to pvpoke.com, check out the rankings for yourself, and see what Pokemon you might want to run. Uh, obviously, the Pokemon that are at the top are th some of the top performers, so definitely consider these. As always, if you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.